Welcome to the Basque Country in northern Spain. It's less well known to the British than, say, the Costa Blanca or the Costa del Sol, mostly because the sun doesn't shine so much and it's not so warm. And of course, it rains. And that's why the countryside behind me is so green. It's been a very popular part of Spain for northern Europeans to visit for over a century. People have come to enjoy the countryside and also the spectacular coastal scenery. Resorts like the one behind me called San Sebastian developed in the mid 19th century and they became very fashionable for people to come to from all over Europe. Here in the Basque Country the commercialization that you find in southern Spain is largely absent and you'll find very much the culture and the customs of this part of Spain come to the fore. And of course British tourists are very welcome. However, go back 200 years and you'll find that the local people here had a very different experience of the British. It was 1813 and the Iberian Peninsula had been occupied by Napoleon's French forces since 1807. After a long and bloody campaign, Britain with its Portuguese and Spanish allies had pushed the French out of most of Spain and were heading towards the French border. The British, under Sir Arthur Wellesley, better known as the Duke of Wellington, tasked themselves with laying siege to the French garrison in San Sebastian. The siege lasted two months. San Sebastian lay on a peninsula with a fortress called Uguay being at its heart. Wellington knew that the only way to take it would be to break down the walls of the city on the landward side. The big guns needed to breach the walls were not available until the end of August. A massive barrage on the 31st of August broke down the defences at a place the locals now call the Breach. And that's when things started to go wrong as the British stormed in. The British soldiers went on a drunken rampage throughout the city, pillaging, raping and murdering, and then finally burning the city to the ground. Most of the 9,000 population of the city were killed in the mayhem. The French, meanwhile, hold themselves up on Uguay and eventually surrendered on the 8th of September and they were allowed to return to France. The controversy over the killing of the civilians was not helped by Wellington, who blamed the French for the mayhem, which wasn't true. After the war, the city was rebuilt on its medieval layout, and only vestiges of its medieval fortifications exist. In the 19th century, prosperity returned with its development as a fashionable resort. This was just one episode in a war that was filled with atrocities committed by all sides. Actually, most wars are filled with San Sebastians. Whether that be Arar or Ypres, Coventry or Dresden, Aleppo or Mosul, they remind us of the depths to which human beings can stoop in the name of war. How do we justify the horrors of war? Well, what we usually do is appeal to the right that's on our side. We find some moral justification for going to war. And religion has often been used as that justification for attacking somebody, for defending ourselves, for defending our way of life, and even for committing atrocities. I know of many people who've rejected the Christian faith simply because down the centuries it's been an excuse for going to war and being involved in conflicts. But is the Christian faith really a warmongering religion? Actually, it couldn't be further from the truth, and followers of Jesus, like myself, find it a great sadness when we see people threatening others, insulting others, and persecuting people in the name of Jesus, because Jesus advocated the exact opposite. Jesus came to bring shalom. He came to bring peace between people and God, and also between people and people. Here's a few words that Jesus spoke in Matthew's Gospel. You've heard that it was said, you should love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I tell you, 
love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who mistreat you and persecute you, that you may be children of your Father who is in heaven. The whole philosophy of the Christian faith is to love others, to put the needs of others before your own needs, to do to others what you'd have them do to you. I don't find it surprising that Christians are at the vanguard of peace movements worldwide. In a world where the agenda for many still results in San Sebastians, Jesus brings a radical agenda which, when people take it seriously, is life transforming, community transforming and peace bringing. And Jesus can bring that peace into our families and into our communities. Whether you're a Christian or not, why not ask Jesus to bring that difference into your life today?